I would uh, like to invite Dr. Sahil Brigpuri. He is MD from PJ Chandigarh. He is consultant dermatologist in Nilkant Hospital. He is co-founder of SODC. His key areas of interest is regenerative medicine and incorporation, incorporation of the same in vitiligo. And he will speak on preparation of NCECS in stromal vascular fraction. Dr. Sahil Mikpri. Is he here? He's coming. Hello. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for the introduction. Uh, I guess I'd like to make the session a bit interactive. Uh, so this is a vitiligo conference and I believe every one of you is into NCS. What about SVF? Uh, do we have audience which is working on SVF? Or anyone working on nanofat? So what exactly we are talking about here is preparation of non-cultured epidermal suspension in SVF. So why fat? We are all dermatologists, no? And this was my question like, Four years back, when I was into dermatology, I never wanted to move into fat. We were trying to move into the all regenerative science and all the mechanisms, and, and didn't want to go into fat, because we are, have to learn lipoaspiration, we have to go out to ethical things, so many things. But then finally we have to move out to fat. What is the real reason? That the real reason is the stem cell theory and the whole stem cell Nike, what all is built up. So if we look up closely, the fat cells is a homeostatically stable model in itself. So they have their own blood vessels, they have their own stroma, they have their own growth factors, and these growth factors and everything, they are itself sustainable and able to multiply. This is why we need to extract fat, so as whenever we are talking about regenerative medicine. Second is the source of stem cells. So it will be surprising for many of you that uh, the fat as a source of stem cells is even 250 times higher than the bone marrow. So fat is the highest source of stem cells and obviously it is much easier to extract and very easy when you compare it to bone marrow. Then why SVF? So we got fat, we got everything. So if we look at a structure of an adipocyte, so 90% of a structure is just occupied by triglyceride or lipid. So definitely we need a mechanism so that we can destroy the adipocytes and get the important fraction of that fat cells which will be helping us in real regenerative. So what does SVF contain? It contains extracellular matrix, it contains the mesenchymal stem cells, the pericytes, the growth factors, the bactoproteins, hormones and the most talked about exosomes. So what will be the role of different factors in vitiligo? We all know that ECM, there have been so many studies of Dr. Mauro Picardo that ECM is the main factor which will be helpful. Then the mesenchymal stem cells, we are talking about stability. So CD8, we all know that mesenchymal stem cells are the main important factor in inhibiting the CD8 cell activity. So when we are working on surgery and we want patients to try on who have not a very long period of surgery, like not a very long period of stability, like three to six months, you need mesenchymal stem cells to inhibit the multiplication of CD8 cells. Then the pericytes are very important for the mesenchymal, uh, for uh, going uh, for the uh, future mesenchymal stem cells. And obviously we know the role of all the growth factors for wound healing and so many things. So when we study on different cell lines, so we can, this is a proved thing for so many years that adipocyte stem cells can differentiate into chondrocytes, into osteonocytes, adipocytes and neurogenesis. So this is a proved fact since so many years. So how we can proceed and how we can aspirate fat in a manner which is much ethical and to be learnt of. So I'll just play a short video here with how we're going to demonstrate the same. So the main source for our fat cells, the best source is inner thigh and upper abdomen. So the site we are using here is lateral thigh. We are using a simple clean solution. So we inject normal saline with ADR with lignocaine. So normal saline, it helps in separation of the fat cells. The ADR will control the bleeding and obviously the lignocaine is important. So please see the movement of the left hand here. 
the left hand is the most important hand which we need to master for lipo aspiration so at the end we aspirate around 60 cc of fat cells from the donor area so this gives us the most important thing which is required that is kg of the fat cells then we decantate the fat for about 10 minutes and finally we get the rbcs at the bottom then fat cells in the middle and at top we get the oil so these are special patented tube the same tube can be put up in the centrifuge so we discard the uh, pvc from the uh, downside and we remove the oil and we put it in the centrifuge this is a special uh, temperature monitored centrifuge what we are using here and we are starting with the first spin first spin is at 1500 g for 8 minutes now what is going inside that now we are working on separating the fat cells from exactly what we need to discard so we are discarding it from the oil and the rbcs so finally we have a solution at the top we have the rbcs and in center we have the fat cells so with the same syringe we discard both of the things and we transfer this fat into four syringes now now this is the most important part we are now we are going to mechanically digest fat so the fat we have received now is divided into four syringes and please see to the next steps because these are the most important steps of our next procedure so these are honeycomb designs patented blades which will be used for cutting up the flat so we are not using the enzyme there were so many papers and especially with article 351 coming up with phc that collagenase is not to be used and there are so many ethical things so this is the future that you are actually mechanically destroying the fat rather than doing it with something like a enzyme so this is non enzymatic mechanical preparation through fat then we go to the second spin and after the second spin we can see the triglyceride at the top extracellular matrix in the middle and the saline with the svf pellet so this is the svf pellet which is the most important factor and which will be useful for us for our next thing so why we are going with enzyme non enzymatic because the regulatory constraints will be very less it will be less time consuming it will be definitely less expensive in future so what are the devices which are available right now in the market this is just been since 2020 that these sort of devices has come up and currently there are three devices what i could research on which are dealing with non enzymatic preparation of svf so first one is by dr cohen and with this device this is known as lipo cube so what they are doing with this lipo cube there is a small cutting what they are doing on here and when we compare it with the cell count so it is comparison we get about 1 to 4 1.4 into 10 raised to power 6 which has a good cell viability but it is comparison to nano fat this is what you need to learn that nano fat and svf are definitely not the same thing so the lipo cube is giving you cell count somewhere nearby around the nano fat numbers then coming to the new products which have come up the only two products currently which are like totally head to head one is the adenizer which is by dr john cole and second is the microlyzer so this is product is by timmer et al so what is the difference is only in the uh, how the framework of the devices has been and as per the joint statement they are the three markers for stem cells one is the cd73 cd90 and cd105 so both of them are showing comparison number and you can see that the uh, staining of the count is very high so definitely we are getting appropriate number of counts and you can see that its stem cell count is very high it is around 3.82 into 10 raised to power 6 so from talking about getting dermal grafts getting just cells into thousands now we are actually moving into true regenerative medicines we are getting cells in millions so these cells have so much of potential and they can bring about so much this is where i try to incorporate them into my vitiligo surgery so these are some of the stains which were done on the same cells and you can see that they were assessing very nicely and they were also on cell cultures they were going on and staining with alizarin safranin o and oil red o so we can understand that definitely they are going on for chondrogenic and for your osteogenic staining so what we did that it is a petri dish with a forcep with phosphate buffer saline a trypsin solution sterile injection and a svf isolation kit so a very simple method which was my thesis as well we use a four compartment for preparation of the non cultured epidermal cell suspension so in compartment 1 we transfer the uh, skin graft and with 0.25% trypsin and eds solution and it is incubated for around 37 degree for 1 hour same way you can use it in the cold method where you keep it at the room temperature for overnight 
Then in the second and third step, you wash off this with phosphate buffer saline. The fourth is the main step where you separate the epidermis from the dermis and you wash it off. So here we implanted this technique and we mixed on on the fourth step with the SVF. And uh, this is the surgical technique for implantation which is used as standard of all NCS surgeries. And you can see that the studies have shown up that we are getting some great results. And I believe that with the future of regenerative science evolving on, we definitely we should work on and definitely we could incorporate vitiligo and stem cells into the uh, treatment of vitiligo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sahil. And uh, any questions from the audience, please? Ah, here's uh, thank you for a very nice uh, presentation. So this micro uh, uh, microtube uh, or lipotube, is it available here in India? Yeah, Microlyzer is uh, like a patented device by T Labs India. And it is, uh, we have a distributor in India and it is available, yes. Okay, and how many cases did you do with this? How, I mean, how many years of experience were using the fat so cells? Mainly we are using it for regenerative medicine. We are using it for hair loss. We are using it for lipo. I think we are using it mainly for rejuvenation of face, for many other indications. So in, because my key area of interest is also vitiligo, that's why I explored it to trying it even for vitiligo. But it has got a we have got very extensive usage in our regenerative science and for all the aesthetic uses. But the use in vitiligo is very limited as of now. Is there is any uh, comparison studies between the success rate of this uh, um, fat cells and the epidermal grafts or melanocyte suspension? Uh, I believe it will be too early. I believe it would be first time I, it would be a, this sort of a presentation has been made. I don't think there is a study as of now. It's, it's very it. nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, actually, I would like to ask one thing. I have, uh, as we know that uh, those stem cell doesn't turn into the melanocytes or mel uh, so. Uh, if you're putting mel uh, stem cells along with the uh, with the suspension, how does they help? Is it the growth factor they help or what? Because so, wha so we can just tell about the theoretically how they're helping. So first theory is that inhibition of the CD8 cells. So when the disease is not very stable, so they will be helping you in making the disease stable and the relapse will be prevented. This is theory number one. And uh, next is the theory of angiogenesis, that definitely these stem cells are helping you in the angiogenesis pathway, so wound healing would be fast. And the third is through the exosomes and through the various growth factors, so they're helping you with the overall repigmentation. Okay, thank you. One more question. I think, Dr. Sahil, that's a very interesting thought that you're bringing. I think what I could also think, we could possibly, I don't know, it's again a postulation because you're also in a very prelim stage of what you're doing. Maybe it could be a stabilizing factor we could use. You know, if we start injecting nano fat, I don't know, you, I mean, what's your thought about it? You think it could, I mean, it's one thing is part of NCS to help the cells stay and fight the autoimmune process so that post-surgery stability is better and loss of pigment does not occur. But I think per se, I think what I'm looking at is very exciting is if it works. And I think Dr. Prasad had also presented some work on this that uh, it could use a, be used as a stabilizing agent, I think. That would be really interesting and I think we should look at it, I think you should. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, what the whole potential and for such platforms is that we can think about, we can explore together. And I believe that is what we were talking about before, that if we can get into some somewhere like a uh, that we can get into a topical formulation or something like a liposomal drug delivery or getting it injected through the insulin syringe and we can keep this SVF with longevity for around six months, I believe this will be fantastic for the patient outcomes in future. Yeah. What about dermal stem cells? H have you thought about that? Yeah, so uh, the only thing is, uh, I, we have a study already on the dermal stem cells from PGI. The only difference is, as per my understanding of fat and as per my gurus, what we learn from Dr. Steve Cohen and everybody, that actually this number of cells, when you compare it the numbers, the, in dermis the number is very few. It is just in thousands, whereas we're working in millions when we are working up with fat. 
and as per in dermis it don't have that humostatically stable environment which will self sustainable for them so in fact you actually have all the cells you are not even having the mesenchymal stem cell also having the pericytes also having the epiderm uh, ed adipocyte stem cells so all of the cells are there all the growth factors all the pathways are there so this whole model you can understand with the dermal stem cells i believe we need more studies to understand it how actually we can utilize them thank you thank you so thank you